But you need to be able to understand that the best thing you do is be completely open, honest, and transparent before God. There's nothing better for you than to be hot. That's actually the acronym. We learned that in Bible study. You have to be open, you have to be honest, and you have to be transparent. I'm angry at the state of the world. I'm angry that I went through those things. I'm upset that these people hurt me. I'm hurt that I was accessed that way. I don't like that. I don't. And so I have to tell them because if I don't, I'm just burying it and it's bottling up inside of me. And when it comes time, I'm furious and I, I'm angry at people. And it's like, no, you take that to God and you let him take it and you let him wash you. You let him cleanse you and you let him love you because he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. I get to this point in a lot of my videos where as I'm saying things that are really true. They touch me, my own heart. This is why I can't be afraid to be confident of who God has called me to be. Oh, Jesus have mercy, Jesus have mercy. Hello and welcome to today's video. Today, I wanna to talk about confidence. The world has a lot of things they say about what it takes to be confident, how it should look, but what is real confidence if it's not found on truth, on the only one that's real, which is Jesus? So without further ado, let's get into this really long list of different things I compiled. Hopefully, after you watch this video, you leave feeling like, yes, I'm a Christian, I'm confident, I stand on the truth, I know who Jesus is, and I know his will for my life. First of all, are you sure of yourself? Do you believe what you say you believe? Here's what I believe as a Christian. I believe Jesus died and rose again. He died for my sins. I genuinely believe I'm a sinner and without him, I do bad things. I think evil thoughts, I'm lustful, I'm proud. I want to succeed in the world without him. I want a lot of things. All the things I said in the world, they're gonna be like, that's normal, that's just human nature, blah, blah, blah. Do you realize how much suffering we go through because of the fact that that's how we understand things like, oh yeah, you're just a person, you're gonna go through those things. That's not how it works. The way it actually works is you're supposed to be perfect. So you have to become the kind of a person that strives for perfection, lust, greed, anxiety, fear, depression, all those things, that's not your nature. Your nature is whoever God says you are now. You're supposed to be perfect in him. It says, walk before me and be perfect. So people think, oh my gosh, Christians think they're so perfect. Yeah, I do think I'm perfect. I'm striving in perfection. Jesus was perfect and because I'm trying to reflect him, I'm gonna become perfect and I'm gonna look and keep being like him. That's what it is. There's a scripture, it says, mark the perfect man, behold the upright and, the, and the, that man, it's peace. So you need to be able to look around you and see who around me is actually trying to live for Jesus. Who around me reflects Jesus that I can follow after. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. Why am I gonna follow just a man? He's just a man, yeah, but he's a man who reflects Jesus. So me, I can confidently say, I have good godly leadership. I have people in my life who are striving to live for Jesus and denying themselves. And when they're doing that, I can see what it does for them. So my pastor, who I told you guys in the last video, he encouraged me, oh, don't monetize, don't do that. Everyone was coming at me. They were hating on me so hard. And if I wasn't confident and sure of what God already said and of who I am and of my faith, I would have crumbled. I would have been like, no, maybe they're right. Maybe I should monetize. Maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do that. But I don't monetize my videos because I realized, no, I have no place having dealings with the devil and allowing ungodly ads, which I will flash across the screen for you guys really fast, play on my videos in order for me to get some money. And that's what my pastor encouraged me to do. And why would I trust him and believe that he's right about this? Well, because I see God for myself and I understand what he said is true. And then not only that, I see that he does it too. He also has a YouTube channel that's very popular, but he chooses not to monetize. And what does Jesus do? Jesus responds to him favorably. Jesus actually prospers him and he has things he needs. God will bless him out of nowhere. Someone from random countries will send him lots of money on cash app because they're like oh you're integrous you stand on what you believe you preach the truth of god and they'll just bless him way more than youtube could ever and i'm not just talking about the money but it's just like hey if you look at this person and they're telling you how to live for the lord and pouring into you because god gives you pastors after his own heart and they're doing it right you should be able to look up to them and follow their example and get good fruit and that's what happened to me i followed his example and i got good fruit i told you guys in the testimony jesus blessed me with a house and he gave me money he just dropped in my bank account supernaturally if you want to see the whole video go watch my last testimony and that was the fruit of that you need good leadership, godly leadership, strong leadership that you can follow after. The world has focused on what you can control. But the truth is, there's not much we can control. You didn't make anything. God is the one who makes everything. So we have to be able to stop worrying and really just give our fears and anxieties to God because he's the one who's in control. Worrying doesn't get you anywhere. Worrying doesn't solve the problem. It doesn't make it less stressful. You can't control it. So we need to learn to give our worries to God. The only part that's actually true about the statement, like focusing on what you can control, is controlling what you take in, what you watch on TV, what you scroll at on social media, who you follow, all of that. You can control it. Unfollow all those people who are promoting lust, fear, pride, unbelief, anxiety, and even the manifestation accounts, witchcraft accounts, all those things, unfollow them. You need to do that. If you wanna be confident and sure of yourself, you need to make some sacrifices. Oh 
my gosh, you unfollowed some celebrity. Oh my gosh, you unfollowed some person who just keeps sharing wicked stuff. We're supposed to be friends. No, unfollow those people. You need to start making strong decisions. I have control over what music I listen to. I, Yodeline, Yodeline Light, listen to no music. I don't listen to music. Not even the Christian modern day music because it's ungodly. It's like prosperity gospel preachers who made that mega churches and people who don't actually have the fear of God in them. So I have to make those decisions because I can actually control that and I can choose what I let process through my mind. You know, your mind, it's a battlefield. Satan is after it and God is after it. But Satan is oftentimes gonna take dominion because in your natural flesh, you're more attracted to the things that are worldly and pleasing to the eye. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes and the pride of life. That's very real. That's what the Bible says. And you're more likely to surrender to that if your mind is not stayed on Jesus. You have a lot of bondage that you probably to have. So bondage is when you're bound by something that you want to be freed from. So I was, I went through different abuses when I was younger. If you watch my testimony of witchcraft to Jesus, many of my siblings and people in my life, it's a generational curse. They got raped. Bad things happened. I was in that room. Very traumatizing for me because I witnessed that. I, I didn't get harassed in that way, but I was there and God covered me, but people around me, do you, can you imagine the trauma? You walk out in a place like that and it's like, oh my gosh, I live with people who are abusive and they live here. That's trauma. I was bound by that. I was always feeling worthless and ashamed and embarrassed about the childhood I had and the hardships. Those are traumas. You need to know your traumas and you need to take them to Jesus. The world likes to say, do shadow work. Find out what hurts you. Don't do shadow work. That's witchcraft. You need to be able to spend some time, make a list of all the different things that you went through, that you engaged, that hurt you, people who hurt you, bad relationships you had, soul ties you may have. You need to write it out on a sheet of paper and go before the Lord, confessing all those different things to him and renouncing it. And what does it mean to renounce something? Telling God, I no longer agree with this. I confess this as evil. I cut all ties from this. Jesus, forgive me for having participated in that. I'm sorry for those things. And even things that were not your fault, God. Sanctify me, cleanse me, purify me, heal me from the hurt. Do you understand like a lot of the things I burnt myself. I had to go through a lot of really bad things. Not just when I was a child, even when I left Haiti and I was no longer in the home environment where molestation was happening and physical abuse was happening. When I left that, I went, I moved to America thinking I'm going to get free and I went to something worse. Worse in that, at least in Haiti, I had my mom and I felt at home. When I came to America, I felt so not at home. It's not my nation. I'm new here. I'm a foreigner. And then having nothing and there was a time, I already talked about this in my testimony of how I became Christian as a teen. I was in the closet for weeks and months at a time. I was put away and I would have punishments and then people would bully me. I wear the same uniforms as well every day. I went through a lot. Okay, so when it came time to know Jesus, I'm like, why would Jesus let me go through that? I hated him. I couldn't confidently say, I trust Jesus, I believe in him, why would I? Because I went through bad stuff and he let it happen. And I'm saying these things because that's how I thought about it. And then when I came to know Jesus and I witnessed like, oh, people are in sin. People are blinded by their human nature. They're so unfocused on God that his grace left. So I was in a place where no grace, no covering was there. When God removes his hand from something, you're subject to everything. And he didn't even in those times completely remove his hand from me because so many times I was supposed to go through something that should have broken me. It should have killed me. I should have gotten hurt. Bad, bad things that I should have. Like how could a kid go through that? Because I'm 21, if you guys don't know. A lot of my experiences I talk about happened before the age of 16. It's like that should have killed you. But guess what? Who was there with you? Jesus. Why did he let you go through this? Because it was building your character. It was your testimony. This is what you're going to preach. This is what you're going to tell others. It's going to bring others freedom. All these different things, they were for the healing of the nations. The hard times are not to break you. They're not to crumble you. They're so that you can become strong. When he has tried, you will come out as gold. All those things are working together for good. He Romans 8.28 it. He really does that. All the bad things you went through, all your sad experiences, they don't have to be trauma or burden or things you care for the rest of your life. You can literally give that to him and he can just take it it shocked me that he could just take it it shocked me that he could just take my heartbreak my pain my sorrows my anger at my family my anger at people in my life my unfairness like all of that he, he just took it he just did that <clears throat> and if you're wondering why is your voice like this right now i shout a lot i scream i scream in god's presence this is something you need to get comfortable doing you want to be confident you want to be sure of your faith you need to scream you can scream at god scream to god scream about the circumstance of the world just do it you just have to like, Jesus! You have to.
You have to help. I'm confused. Why are things this way? Why? 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 You can say why. You really can. I know it's taboo. Like, oh, you, you need to. You do need to honor God. He is holy, but you need to be able to understand that the best thing you do is be completely open, honest, and transparent before God. There's nothing better for you than to be hot. That's actually the acronym. We learned that in Bible study. You have to be open. You have to be honest. You have to be transparent. I'm angry at the state of the world. I'm angry that I went through those things. I'm upset that these people hurt me. I'm hurt that I was accessed that way. I don't like that. I don't. And so I have to tell them because if I don't, I'm just burying it and it's bottling up inside of me. And when it comes time, I'm furious and I, I'm angry at people. And it's like, no, you take that to God and you let him take it and you let him wash you. You let him cleanse you and you let him love you because he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. I get to this point in a lot of my videos where as I'm saying things that are really true, they touch me, my own heart. This is why I can't be afraid to be confident of who God has called me to be. Oh, Jesus have mercy, Jesus have mercy. He loves you and he loves me. He loves us. We're his daughter, his sons his children, he made you, he made you. You need to believe that. You need to believe that. I need to believe that. And I am believing it. I'm living it. I live it when I obey him. You need to start obeying him. That's what confidence is. When you obey God, you become confident. Oh, how do I obey God? I think God doesn't want me to wear weave. Stop wearing weave. That's one example for me. I think God wants me to get rid of my Brandy Melville clothes because I got them because I wanted to be popular and fit in with the white girls at school. Get rid of them, burn them. See, I obeyed. I can be confident because I'm doing things and as I do it, God responds to me favorably. That is what confidence is founded on. You know God and he responds to you. You need to know God for yourself. Peter said, you need to have a reason for your faith. You need to be able to tell people, why do you believe the things you believe? Yodeline, why do you believe the things you believe? Because I live it, I experience it, that's my testimony. You need to live it, you need to experience it. You think you hear God say this, do it. I dare you, just do it. Whatever you think it is, do it right now. Write it down, write it down somewhere. You need to make a list, that's the next thing. I make lists. I have my phone screen right here, and my phone screen says, who is Yodeline? And then on this list, there's like 20 things. All the different things that I know God says I am, or that I see the Bible says is a good characteristic that I want to walk in, I add it to that list. Yodeline is holy. Am I always holy? I strive to be, but no, not always. Am I always modest? I try to be. Am I always gonna preach or want to pray every day or do certain things? I don't. That's not my natural disaster, but do I do it? Yes. So you need to become the kind of person who sees the responsibility, sees what God wants you to do, and you actually do it. You can't just think it in your mind. Your thoughts have to eventually become actions. That's important. If you want to be confident, you need to be a doer. I'm pretty sure that's in the Bible somewhere. We can't just be hearers of the word. We have to be doers of it. We can't just hear someone say, God wants you to obey. God wants you to make sacrifices. God wants you to be holy. God wants you to stop listening to secular music. God wants you to cut off bad people. And you can't just hear it and like, ah, that was just another video. No, you need to go do it. Go do something. You need to do things. Actions make you confident. Act. You need to do things. You have to. If you're not doing anything, you're gonna feel inconfident. You're gonna feel unmotivated. You feel like your life is worthless, no purpose, no drive. You're not doing anything. You don't have any real reason to be confident. There's nothing to go off of. So you need to be doing things. How do you consistently become somebody who does things? You need routines and patterns. Now, it's very cliche in the Christian community to have a Christian girl morning routine. Hey, guess what? I'm guilty of it. Before I became more confident in who the Lord wanted me to be, I was trying to be the version of what I saw online. I wanted to be an aesthetic Christian girl. I wanted to be trendy. I wanted to be relatable. I've had to throw relatability in the trash. I say things that make people uncomfortable, that make people mad, that make people unsubscribe. I don't care. And routines were one of those things I tried to fit into. So now I'm not going to talk down on it. Routines actually help. Here's what I mean. Routine is being disciplined to do the same thing every day. So you need a morning routine where you're disciplined to pray, read, and worship. At one point in your day, you need to dedicate a chunk to the Lord. And I would say first, because it says, early in the morning will I seek you. And then a night routine where you also spend time with the Lord. And even in your prayer, you can say, God, give me confidence. Give me faith in you. Give me trust in you. Make me holy like you. Make me righteous like you. Give me passion. Give me fire. Give me zeal. Tell him in your time with him. I'm telling you, where's my notebook? It's here somewhere. I write all these things down. And guess what? When he answers them, I have something to go back to. So you don't need to have some aesthetic morning routine with avocado toast. You don't need all that stuff. In, in past times in my morning routines, I made it look cute, but it's not cute. Sometimes you're like crawling yourself out of the bed, drinking a tumbler of coffee, because I've had to drink coffee to stay awake, to get time with the Lord. I was getting up at 4 a.m. I was 
dog tired, but I got up pray seek the lord and then somebody had the audacity to tell me oh you sound like you're very workspace you do this you do that what do you think christianity is about not to prove yourself worthy to jesus because you can't make yourself worthy he makes you worthy and then from there you go when you're faithful when you're holy and obedient you're doing things that manifest there's no way you can know jesus and it doesn't manifest in your life in all areas of your life something else is how valuable are you to people in your life what makes us valuable well your time that's a resource your money that's a resource your skill like your talent, if you can do art, like I do art and I paint, and sometimes I give it to people. This is one of my paintings in worship before the presence of God. I can make something like that for someone else and give it to them. Praying for somebody, that's very valuable. You can go and help someone clean up. When you do things for people, you become more confident because you have value. And then something else, if you're someone who struggles with a lot of sin, the more you sin, the less confident you are. But if you find yourself struggling with sin, it's probably because you're not doing enough. You're not busy enough. You need to get busy. You need to be productive. Jesus says, any branch that does not bear fruit, he's gonna cast it off. He's saying, you have to produce something. And then something I realized was, oh, producing literally means producing. Like after I recorded this video, I have to put it on my timeline, edit it, so I've produced something and there's something to show for it. Go do some holy things. You become confident as you're doing good. Start Bible journaling, not for vain reasons to get famous, but Bible journal, write scriptures. Start an account on Instagram where you preach. Spend more time reading the Bible, listening to the Bible. Start painting something. Ask someone if they want to spend time with you. Somebody you know is also trying to grow in their faith. Go get a job. Go get some hobbies. There's so much you could do. Something else. I mentioned it for a second, but you need to start evangelizing. Can I tell you the truth? Before I started preaching online all the time, I didn't know what I believed. What do you believe? Yodeline says she believes in Jesus. Okay, well then why do you believe in Jesus? Oh, because he saved me. He changed my life. Okay, he changed your life. How do we know that? Well, let me tell you how. I start telling you about it. How can something so drastic like following Jesus and becoming Christian, leaving my old life behind in the world to live for Jesus completely, how can that not be something I talk about all the time? I have to shout it on the rooftops. I'll literally be in the store and I'll talk to somebody about Jesus just because I feel like at least I'll plant a seed. As I'm doing that, as I'm evangelizing and telling people about Jesus, I'm talking to me about Jesus. I am speaking it into the world okay why is that so important why is that so special because death and life lie in the power of the tongue so evangelizing requires you that was my speaker because i like to worship with music on and i blast it on the speaker anyway evangelism requires you to speak about jesus here's the gospel if you guys don't know it there is a god man was separated from him because of sin he sent his son jesus to die for your sins when you receive him, you can be reconnected with him and one day he's gonna come back and we're all gonna be judged for the things we did and didn't do, whether or not we accepted and confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior. So that's the gospel, right? So when I was first scared, I would just do it scared. I made a separate account that nobody knew me on and I would just spread the gospel and I would put it on my personal page. Then I started making YouTube videos about God. It was hard, it was a process, but guess what? That's the next point, it is a process. Don't condemn yourself if you're not doing everything right away. The process isn't some random process. God has a perfect plan. He has a process that he has to take things through remember when he was creating the world he didn't create it all in one moment it happened over the course of days so yours is a process as well first you might be scared then you're going to become a little bit more open and confident then you're going to go for it then you're going to be bold about what you believe you're going to evangelize you're going to say things man the first time i went evangelizing i had this sign i made this jesus t-shirt and i was like I was so scared to talk on the mic because the way we do it is you get the mic, you have the speaker and you talk. We would go to like a Walmart plaza or a shopping plaza or somewhere popular and we would just start talking. And it was me and two of my other friends. The funny thing is, this is another thing about confidence, what's in you naturally comes out. So you can't be afraid of getting to your core, right? So my friend Elizabeth, what's in her naturally, she loves babies, she loves kids. So she's talking. Oh my God, I feel the goosebumps because of the Holy Spirit. She loves kids and she started talking and she's saying how Jesus saved her. He saved her because he knew she was gonna be a chain breaker. She was gonna break the generational curses for her kids. She was gonna be there for them. All the things she went through, they wouldn't have to go through. So she's talking because this is her experience. This is why Jesus saved her. And she's saying things that are true. And so she starts crying and mothers are walking by, coming to her in like the son who's in her hand. She's crying and she's just listening to my friend Elizabeth. She's saying it and accepting what's naturally in her, not trying to bury it or make people comfortable or do what she thinks people would want to hear. It's coming out and it's actually affecting people. And then Hadassah, when she goes up, what's naturally in her, she's talking about the sin, the worldly, the need to comply because that's her testimony. Like peer pressure, teenagehood, all that. She has a thing for reaching people and her heart literally is on fire for the Lord when it comes to that. She has a heart for them. And so the kinds of people she's distracting are also the kind of people who her message is for. Evangelism does that. And then me, I was, 
the crazy thing, the craziest thing ever. I didn't get to speak on the mic, but the whole time they were trying to stop us. First, the Walmart employee came out, then the manager came out, then the security came out, then the cops came out. So in level stages. And each time someone came out, I talked to them. So when the first person came out, I was like, yeah, ma'am, we're just here talking about Jesus because we love him and we want everyone to know him. So then she got compassionate because I'm the one talking to her. And I'm telling her my experience with Jesus and why I'm even doing this. I never thought I'd be the person who'd be in a Walmart parking, parking lot telling people about Jesus. Girl, when I was 16, I was out here partying with boys. So I'm telling her that and she's like, wow, and she, she's moved. She starts crying. She goes in. Then someone else comes. Then I talk to them. Then they're like, okay, well, you guys can stay for a little bit. And then the security comes. Then I talk to the security man, invited him to church, got my, his number. He's receiving this gospel. He got me on social media so he can see it. And it's like, that's what the Lord wanted me to do. He wants me to confront authorities, those that are older than me, those that are different ages, big age span. And I didn't know what I would be doing when I went out there to evangelize, but that's just what the Lord presented. That was the opportunity. I didn't think that's how it would have played out. So it's like when you're evangelizing, when you're talking about what you know and you stop being scared, God will perfectly work out the steps and he's gonna show you what you're made of and what he's called you to do. That was something I found hard. That was something I found awkward, cringy, embarrassing, scary. So you need to start doing things that you find hard and uncomfortable for the name of Jesus. Because guess what? It was uncomfortable to be on that cross. It's uncomfortable to talk to strangers. A big burly man, he's got muscles, he's in this truck, he can arrest me and I'm talking to him. So we have to do things that make us uncomfortable. And then something else, worship. When you go to church, you need to start raising up your hand and doing the moves that you think are too much. You need to worship passionately and expressively. Worship him in dance, in spirit. That's what it says in Psalms. We have to worship God in dance, with instruments, with music. Me, specifically, God has made me a dancer, girl. Or boy. I had two left feet before this. I did not know how to dance. I was not coordinated. Now I'm in worship spinning and spinning and spinning. Hours can go by and I'm still just twirling around, dancing by spirit. At first I thought that was weird. Do you want to know something? When I first came to church, I was hiding in the back on my phone, on Instagram, waiting for the time to be done. Months later, I started listening, looking over the pews, seeing what the pastor is saying, getting interested. The best thing about my pastor, Pastor David Williams, is he was not going to sugarcoat anything for anybody. So if y'all are wondering what makes me like this, I get it from him. So people will be like, you're like your pastor's too much. You guys are trying to be like clones of him. I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? I would not be here if I didn't actually have somebody to look up to, right? So here I am in worship. I was scared to dance, I was scared to do anything. And then he'll be on stage, he'll start dancing and doing stuff. And I'm like, okay, I feel a little more confident because this guy who is very established, very sure of himself is dancing. So just do it, just dance. It feels so freeing. David danced before the Lord until his clothes fell off. I've danced until I some embarrassing moments, but it's okay. It's okay because it's for Jesus. At first I was trying to be cute. I was trying to make it look beautiful. Like, Bro, you don't have to make it cute. You don't have to make it beautiful. It's cute and beautiful because you're cute and beautiful and you're my daughter. That's how God feels about it. And it's like, we are, we're not gonna sing. We're not gonna dance. We're not gonna worship. We're not gonna wanna do a lot of things that God considers worship and holy before him because we don't think it looks good enough or it's perfect enough. Can you imagine if you're a mom and you see a son your son and your son brings you this thing and they're like hey I made this for you you're gonna love it you're gonna put it on your fridge because it's like oh you're my kid that's so cute it's so perfect so do things for god worship and dance before him sing even if you can't carry a tune <laughs> do all of it freely because that's gonna make you confident as you see that he accepts you just as you are perfect he finds it perfect he loves it he loves it like i'm not even kidding i he joins me in worship he's dancing with me i have a picture in my journal my art journal where i'm dancing with jesus because he joined me after i get so free in his presence i'm not even thinking about the people around me i'm not by myself in church if it was just me by myself that's one thing i'm with other people so then that's another thing when you're by yourself do it anyway when you are a daughter of god you need to start carrying yourself like a daughter of god dressing as though i'm the daughter of a king you know, Psalms 45 says the king's daughter is glorious within. Her clothing is of rock gold. I remember I used to wear the most skimpy clothes. And I can say that not to talk down on younger me who was lost and confused and trying to find her identity in how she dressed. But because I thought genuinely dressing this way made me confident. Dressing this way got me attention. It got me popularity. It made me make friends. It made boys like me. It made people call me beautiful. So I was doing that. That was the wrong purpose. That was the wrong motive. And it's like, oh, you're not representing the Lord in the way you dress. Even when I got saved, I didn't want to let go of those clothes for a long time. So when I turned 20, I had to make that video. It was my birthday and I posted it. Like I'm burning those brandy Marvel clothes. I don't think I'm some teeny bopper girl who's this Oreo who has to fit in with society standards. That's not me, burn it. I got rid of so many clothes. So my purpose was because I want to actually look like Jesus. I want when I'm talking about Jesus to not look like I have a mixed message going on. Sometimes I see people on Instagram who are sharing such truth and then they're dressed half naked. And people are like, can you focus on the truth and not how she dressed? 
just what are you talking about i'm not judging or condemning anyone because i struggled for a long time but there's a pride that keeps us in that place like you guys are focused on my clothes how dare you say that how could you say something like that like oh you need to ignore how i dress you came on here, you're putting yourself on here for me to look at, for me to receive your message, but this is how you dress, that's part of your message. The way you dress is a part of your message. The way you dress is a part of what you're preaching. The way you carry yourself is a part of that. You dress like the world, but the words you say are Christian words. So it says, no, depart from me. Like you can't have relationship with light and darkness. You can't have this, but also that. It's confusing, it's blurry, it makes people not understand what is real Christianity? What is the basis of this? I need to be confident of who I am. So this side, holiness, righteousness, purity in the way I dress, the way I talk, the way I engage people. That's what I stand on. So I can't talk this way, but then dress that way, look this way, treat people that way. No, you need to be modest outwardly, inwardly, specifically outwardly, because it's the easiest thing to change. It's harder to change your heart posture than it is to at least change your clothes. Put on some clothes, just put on some clothes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I needed to hear that. People have to tell me over and over again before it clicked, then Jesus moved on me. So you need to start praying for a heart that actually wants modesty. Cause yes, people can say it to you. It won't be helpful if you only do it just cause I said it or cause someone said it. It's helpful when God puts it on your heart and convicts you to actually see things the way he sees it. Hey, you're my daughter, cover up. I wanna protect you from the world. I wanna protect you from people who are vultures who wanna look at you and be sexually satisfied based on how you dress. You're my daughter. Don't give them sexual satisfaction based on how they're looking at you and liking your pictures and screenshotting and being disgusting in their minds with how you look, because that's how you present yourself. The devil is a liar. Next, you need to start thinking about the miraculous. People think too naturally. When you start thinking about things like it's a debate between man and man, you're just looking at people as people and everything is everything and nothing is nothing. You're just looking at things too naturally. You need to start thinking miraculously. God gave me a house. I didn't have a job because I experienced that. I'm not thinking about the fact that he's not gonna do it again. He is gonna do it again. He did it once and he'll do it again. That's the kind of God we serve. Same yesterday, today, and forever. So we need to start thinking miraculously. He can do things for me. He can heal me. He can provide my needs. He can give me the right relationships. And I bring up the house because that's the most recent miraculous thing I experienced in the last weeks. I'm gonna start running through these really fast because this video is getting really long. One time, I read the Bible in 30 days. From Genesis to Revelation, I was so determined and it was like, 50, 60 chapters some days when I was reading the Psalms, it was like 90, it was a lot. Taking in the word so much, I left feeling buzzed. I realized, oh my gosh, the word of God literally is alive. It's literally active. If I'm patient enough to go through it, it's gonna change the way my mind thinks. When I saw my sister, she looked so beautiful. Like, I'm not kidding you. Her physical face looked so different. Like I was seeing her through a new lens. It's like I put some pink shady glasses and everything just looked so much better. I could see her through eyes of like the supernatural, it was beautiful. So then when I realized, okay, so reading the Bible really has an effect, I started implementing listening to the Bible in great quantities. Instead of listening to music all day, play the word in your ear. Back in the Bible days, a lot of people didn't know how to read. They had to go to synagogue and hear it. So hearing the Bible is just as effective as reading the Bible. Maybe reading it is a little bit more because it takes more patience and more self-denial, but listening to it, very powerful, very impactful because the word of God is alive. It says faith comes by hearing. So it's like when you're hearing it, it's changing your mindset, it's changing the way you see yourself, changing the way you see your environment. Same spot of modesty, keeping yourself well groomed, making sure you have a heart posture that looks like the Lord, maintaining your outer appearance to represent the Lord because you're his. You can't just do whatever. You can't tattoo your body, you can't pierce everything, you can't be crazy look like him it'll make you more confident you have to remove yourself from environments that don't represent the lord if you're in a conversation in a classroom in a workplace where everyone's doing evil you need to remove yourself from that place you don't have to participate or engage that another thing you need your expectations to be up here if they're a liability when it comes to relationships you have to cut people off you have to cut them off you are pulling me away from the lord when i engage you it's making me worldly no cut them off Bye. And then another thing is you have to sow into the relationships that are good. You need to have godly friendships, godly relationships, talk to people about the Lord, love on people and build those things. Spend time with people, make plans to fellowship. So that's another thing, fellowship, spending time with the brethren. As you spend time with people, lifting up holy hands, breaking bread, it's making you more like Jesus because that's what he did in his day. We're like-minded and we agree on this. So it's making us unite one, on one accord in agreement, we're building each other up. You need to be grateful. Be grateful for all the things the Lord has provided you for. Thank him, pray the Psalms, you know, oh Lord, how excellent is your name, be grateful. He's done so many good things and you need to make lists and testimonies. I have an envelope right over here that just has all the different testimonies and things I've experienced. I like to sit down and record the testimonies so I can remember them, meditate on them and overcome because it's by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimonies, that's how we overcome. So I'm grateful for the things I experienced, bad and good, because I told you guys I've went through bad things. But what, they didn't break me, it's made me stronger, it's made me here to talk to you on how you too can can become confident in your faith. Godly confidence, strong confidence, not what the world is giving or offering fluff. That's not real, it's not real. And when all is said and done, it's gonna die and crumble with them. Their money, that's why I didn't say, you need more money, you need more jobs, you need cars, you need success, you need a basketball career, you need this, you need that. Cause that's not gonna make you confident, that's perishable. 
that stuff is not real. Try your best with your faith. God gives you talent. Some he gives one, some he gives five, some he gives ten. Don't compare someone who has five or someone who has ten if you just have one. You better work the one. You better not bury it and pretend like it's nothing. You need to work it. Whatever God puts on your heart, start doing it. As you work that thing, he's going to expand it. That's what he did, right? He doubles it and then he gives them more and more and more. But your portion, focus on your portion and do well with it and be faithful with it because we're here to serve the Lord. It's not about us anyway. It's not about me. It's not about you. When people see you, let them see Jesus. God increases you so that you can increase others. So if he blesses you financially, artistically, musically, spiritually, that that he gives you, you're blessed to be a blessing. You need to bless others with it. You have to be unapologetic. You cannot be sorry for saying something that's offensive. Be sorry for believing in Jesus. I'm sorry, my faith offends you? Good, good. Don't get offended by people when they don't agree with you. It's fine, your faith should make people offended. Be confident in what you believe in. Know that you stand on Jesus. Know that you, he died for you. And because he died for you, you can be confident in what you say, what you do, the way you choose to live, the reason you even change your perspectives, the reason you cut people off, the reason you make sacrifices, the reason you don't listen to music, the reason you choose to listen to the Bible, the reason you read, the reason you pray, the reason you get up early in the morning, the reason you have a routine. All those things are done for the sake of Jesus and for the sake of seeing him and for him to say, well done, my good and faithful servant, when all is said and done because that's what's going to happen. We're going to see him face to face and it's going to be amazing. I wanted to end off this video by saying thank you all for your endless support, your comments, your birthday blessings, coming into this ministry, loving on me, all of it. Thank you.